Bob with Pettis World. Today we're going to do a video on the Can-Am Spider. I'm going to do its first service, its first 3,000 miles. I'm actually over 3,000 miles. We've been traveling for the last six months. I tried a couple different dealers, different states. Two never called me back. One called me back, but they're like eight weeks out. So I decided to go to, to LeMonster.com and order me the oil change filter kit and I'm going to add a uh, Le Monster uh, belt tensioner and this is the factory BRP uh, brace here and this is the Le Monster's upgraded wheel you got a drive belt on this Can-Am Spider so it's about a four foot long belt and you got to think of this belt being long and when you're going down the road at a constant speed you got your drive being pulled and then on the back side of that belt you get a little flutter and that flutter is what you feel on the bike. So when we're riding, mostly me and Barb ride mostly 90% two up, around 70, 72 miles per hour, we get a, a flutter. And I notice it more than Barb does because she's not as mechanical and she don't notice things as much as I do. Hey! But uh, So what this is going to do, this is going to sit on top of that belt. And you think of that, that belt being a, a, a you know, plane going out. This is going to strap in and this is going to ride on that belt. This is just going to dampen that belt so you get that harmonic balance out of there so you don't feel that belt. So today what we're going to do, we are going to start with this belt tensioner because this is going to involve this side of the bike. So we're going to have to remove panels and get down into here and put this belt tensioner will be riding down in here. So and then the service, which is going to be oil change, is going to involve the other side and it's going to have two drain plugs, one for the tranny and one for the motor. So they, they both have to be drained because they share the oil with each other. And you can see my pile of stuff I got down here, but this is my Le Monster. This is the Le Monster oil. And this is the Le Monster um, filter and uh, all the gaskets and stuff we need to get this started. We're Bob and Barb. We've lived by the rules all of our lives, but in 2020, we threw that rule book out the window. We sold our home and moved full time into an RV with our cat Amelia. And from now on, we will be living life our way. Don't you want to come travel in our world? Anytime you do anything on this bike, these have to come out of the way. So we're going to set this aside. Our next step, we have to get the trunk open. Or the frunk, as people call it, because it's a front trunk. There's a push pin right here we have to remove. This is going to allow us to get this panel out of here. So I'm going to get this out of here. So this panel here is going to should lift up out of here. And I'm kind of a rookie at the spider, so I'm uh, an auto mechanic by trade, by by no means a BRP mechanic, and don't claim to be. But it's my own bike, so I can do what I want with it. <laughs> So this panel comes off, and I'm just going to slide this on here for good measure so yeah. we don't lose it. Yeah, at a campground, it's good just to kind of keep things yeah, together. Yeah, as you can see, we're at a campground right Didn't now. Can get so. lost in the grass otherwise. Most of these panels, I think all of them are removed with a Torx 30 bit. So we're going to start with this little wind deflector out of our way. I know some people say not to use an impact driver, but I'm I'm pretty much professional at an impact driver. I'm not going to. Set the torque real low so I don't tear anything up. This panel here has to come off, so I know we got to remove this one. This one does have a gasket on it. This bike has a lot of parts, so it's good to try to lay it out in some kind of order because you have to be ready to put it back together. We got to lift this. I think this one here is the short one. Yeah, that's the little shorty right there. This one here has got some, it's got a little, or you gotta protect this from breaking. There we go. So this one here, it's got a, a little lip here you gotta protect that lips around this panel. So you kind of kind of pull and hold it in so you don't break the, well, the clip off lid on top yeah i've got the top one 
at the bottom of the green a little stubborn. I know you got to try to work your hand up inside there to get it to pull it out. There we go. So you can show them, show them the little lip when it comes out. Yeah, see that one? See that, that hook's around. That's got a hook. It's got these, and they say you can put a little white lithium grease on these when you get done if you want to uh, find it up on you. So I think just it's out of here. This just sits in some grooves. Pin there holds that in place. right here that's come off so tab there and this is the first time we've taken this panel off so we're figuring this out as we go it's got making sure we've got all the screws out these panels when you see in the uh, blogs they call them tupperware for a reason because it's like a tupperware container so. this one here these are not screws even though they look like they are they are push pins so you want to pull these out and I think the best way is to get behind them push and pull at the same time and now there's a push pin there so I need that blue handle tool there this is another push pin here we got to pull out so there we go if you ever done any body work on a car you know they use a lot of these so. I'm going to slide him back in there and just kind of so I don't lose him. And then this screw here has to come out. So this one here has to come out. So it looks like most of the ones with the body paint need a washer. They get a washer on them. And it looks like this one down here has to come out. So that's a little shorty. So a shorty there and a shorty up here. Okay. So I think this just lifts off off there. Oh, what do we got back here? There you go. So that had some clips where it slides in. You can see them right there. And this, I believe, just lifts out. You tuck it out of the way. This is the belt. So when you're going down the road, you're getting this. You're getting this little vibration. So I'll show you what this dampener. What this dampener is going to do, it's going to sit in here like this. It's going to sit right here and it's going to hold that belt from doing this going down the road it's going to give a little vibration does it make it a vibration. smoother ride or what no explain, i mean explain to no me. you get harmonic balance of vibration so you get a balance anything that spins rotates you get a harmonic distortion as they call it like on the front end of a front car with a crankshaft it has a harmonic balancer on it because you get when something's rotating you get a little bit of you need something to counterbalance the, the vibration so this has got a vibration and you feel it up through the bike. At least I do and at certain speeds. And when we're riding two up, I feel it more like at 70. So what this does is this gets rid of that distortion. It's gonna just give a little smoother ride on your, more of your buttocks and just your mind. <laughs> Cause I, I being mechanical, I, I feel everything. So we have to slide, loosen these bolts, take this one out. This one has to come out and this is gonna go. Say this is the upgraded model because the original one had two bolts here. So it only bolted here. This is actually using this factory bolt here and this factory bolt here. They do give you new bolts. So I'll show you those once we get to that progress. Okay, I'm gonna use a 13 millimeter socket. This one has to come off just by looking at it because it's gonna be in the way. So this one has to come off. So that's that one. This one I believe is just gonna have to be loosened up so I can slide underneath it. This one here, I believe, has to come out. What my goal was to do today is to um, do this belt tensioner, put it back together, ride it a little bit, get it warm, and then I'm gonna try to get it on some kind of block so I can get it up in the air so I can do the uh, oil change. Just to show you, these are the new bolts that come from the monster. They already got Loctite on them. This bolt does not need to come out. Uh, it just needs to be loose. I loosened it up just so I can uh, put this on here. So this belt tensioner is going to ride. It's going to ride right there. Of course, with any kind of bolt, start it with your fingers first unless you want to wall her out the threads. 
just pull it one way or another. So things don't always go according to plan. It's taking two of us here no, to get this on. Going crooked. Some tumultuous moments here. With my steamy glasses. It's super hot. Tornadoes possibly today. Great I mean, time humid. to work on your motorcycle. Yeah. This frame coming down here supports this this whole uh, foot rest area. There's no room for air to get that bolt in there. It's super tight, and this whole thing will shift. So I had to take this bolt here all out to get this thing to where it would uh, start. And he was able to get that one back in right away, but this one here just did not want to find its place. And like yeah. Bob said, you don't want to force it in. You don't want to cross thread it because it's going into a, a big piece of, it feels like a, either steel or aluminum, I'd say. It's probably aluminum, maybe. And if you mess it up, that's very expensive to have to replace all that. They tell you to tighten that one up a little bit. Then if Barbara shines the camera down here, you got your roller and you got maybe an eighth inch that, that sticks off both ends of that belt. So that roller is, you know, yay wide. That roller is that wide and that belt sits in between her. So it says an eighth inch off each end. Right now I've got it to where it feels like it's in the right spot. I'm gonna snug down the factory one that we didn't really need to take out. But, I'm sticking over a little bit on that side and a little bit on that side. You want that to ride in between that belt so the belt doesn't get beat up on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snug this down a little bit. I'm going to make sure it's still in the same position. Yep, it looks like it's riding. 130 inch pounds. So that's what we, I got this little torque wrench that goes up to uh, 200. I set it up just a little higher because anytime you add an extension, you got to you know, lose some percentage. I went to 135. So you want to tighten these up to 135 and your wrench will click when it does it. Factory one. And that should be good. Now I just want to check this one more time, which just feels good. And I'm going to probably take a little ride around the park before I put it back together. And that way, I can take it a, take it a drive. I don't need these panels on here to drive down the road and I'm just going to come back and I just want to check that tension again one more time to make sure that alignment's good on that bolt. When you're working on your bike, my recommendation is one you got to have somebody like Bob that knows what the heck they're doing. Cuz even when it gets tough, you know, it's 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 tough. It's, it's a good thing to have, um, but it needs to be done correctly. So this is our way of how we're doing it. We're showing you it. We're explaining to you why. But if you think it's important and you don't feel comfortable doing it, then have someone do it for you. Even though it is super hard to find anyone to help you at a KDM dealership in their service department. Like we said, only in Indiana, the guy called us back. But the thing about doing it yourself, if you're able to, is that you know that it's done right. And there's not any problems. We work well together. Yes, he's the mechanical and all the fun stuff that you guys like to see. I'm the creative person. I do all your editing and your filming. And poor Bob sometimes, I feel like I direct him to death because I want to get it detailed for you, but he does enjoy it. So he's in there checking it now. It's still good. It's very easy to check, even with the panels on, you can look up from underneath. It's supposed to be part of your pre-check, so you want to make sure, you know, just like your tires, make sure there's nothing wrong with that wheel or anything. So Bob's got it all back together here. He ran a check on the lights to make sure that they work. And now we are going to work on taking the other side apart. He's got to get it jacked up and let it run for about 10 minutes. So we're going to show you what he's doing under there in just a moment. Hopefully you'll be able to see. That's the plug right there. I don't know if you can see it in the light. That, that's a T45. That's for the engine. Like I said, this has got the transmission engine are combined one unit. So 
what I did is I shoved some towels up in there so this oil doesn't run down into this uh, body panel because then it'll it'll sit there and drip out forever so what I'm gonna do is get this draining right here right now all right guys I'm gonna take you under here here's the transmission it's a it's a it's a six millimeter right there and once again you got to put the rags up inside these body panels so it, the oil doesn't run back inside there. Especially if you got a garage or a nice driveway, you don't want it to get up in there and dripping forever. But I got this side, that's that's the engine side right there you see dripping down. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this one loosened up and get this side draining too. I think there's a lot less oil on this side of the equation. Start taking the panels off here once we get this oil started draining. And just so you know, the oil's coming out pretty hot. I mean, it'll burn you. So you just got to be careful. If you have a home and you have a home base, you can get like a little permanent thing if you want. We want something that's disposable because um, we're going to pour the oil and all that back into the little bottles after we put the new oil in and take it to like an auto zone or one of those O'Reilly's or whatever and give it to them to, to put away. Since we are at a thousand trails, we're doing our best to make sure there's no oil on the ground. We've got little things to hold all the tools we're working on. The oil's coming out. We're going to replace it, like we said, with the La Monster oil. All right, I'll set this over here. Wind deflector here. The side wind deflector. If you're a kid, you remember rector sets. This is it right here. If you're a kid, when you were a kid, <laughs> at a certain period of time. So we got a push pin here, we got a pull. And this one's gonna come up out of here. And if you can leave the screws and the pieces in there, do it. Otherwise, make sure you lay them out in order so you know how to put it back together properly, just like we said on the other part. Of course, the videos, they always make it look real easy. This has got, remember, this has got the push pins. Yeah, you want to keep the top end protected because it's slid in. See, even I'm learning. And they're a bear to get off, I tell you, for the first time. Yep. And then we're going to tell you again that we recommend greasing them like we did on the other side when you put them back in because it makes it a lot easier to snap it back together. Watch the boards down there. Yeah, yeah once you get that one off, your knee, you pull this other one off. But yeah, see, it's got... It's got these that slide in the body panel. This hooks over top of this. <laughs> Love the magic mirror. <laughs> Magnets are strong. And we're taking this whole panel off here. And remember, these are not things that screw out their push pins right yep. and these are push pins and these what's the recommended time uh, amount of for changing oil is it similar to a car the first oil change they say is 3,000 and I think they recommend 7,000 after that that's our oil filter right there and that takes a 30 millimeter socket to get that off to take that off you're putting that down in there just to keep stuff from flowing in. I don't. It shouldn't. Cut, nothing really should come out of here because this should be. Yeah, it's our first time. We don't know. Yeah, just don't know. So just so you know, that's where you can check your oil right there. Right here is where you check, and that's where you can put oil in. Looks like you can go either direction, but this what the wording was up on the other one, so I'm gonna put the wording up. This goes in, and this kind of just it just lays in there. It's got a gasket. This part here, we got to replace these little O-rings. The kit comes with all new O-rings. We got the O-rings all put on here, so I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this. Yeah, this is another thing you don't want to cross thread. So we're putting five quarts in. This is court number three. We've got a little silicone funnel, which is working great. It's tiny, but effective. 
but everything looks dry there and now we're just going to be working on checking the oil this bike you got to check the oil when it's hot so yep we were just running it so bob looks like it's hot outside it is hot outside. and even though the temperature got like it was a little bit cooler the humidity went through the roof because both of us are just soaking wet at this moment you check the oil again after you got it Check your Jack oil. Down. I'm gonna ride it just a little bit, then I'll come back and check it. It showed it was on the minimum level, which I'll get it about halfway, so it might take another half quart. I'm not sure. It may be correct now that it's down on the ground because it was on an angle. Yeah, we needed a drink, much needed drink break. It's a very simple job. A couple panels off to get the oil filter and then drain the tube. I definitely need to invest in a better pan. Simple job. I mean, if, if I was sitting in a garage, it'd be even easier, but doing it inside yeah. of an RV park. But that's what I had to do because I just couldn't, literally could not find anybody that would do the job. Do it. The belt tensioner was simple. Yeah, once, it, once I mean, you it, got that screw in. Yeah, I got. I just had to get that uh, the third screw loose to where I could move that floorboards a little bit and be able to jockey that in. And I just wanted to make sure I got it in, you know, going into the threads without cross threading. So we got that in there. The oil change was even simpler than that, but it was. Uh, just took time because of uh, going in on the ground like that. We learned a lot today. We hope you learned a little bit. Uh, please give us a thumbs up. Please yeah. comment below. Uh, please click the notification bell to get notified. And remember, we're ahead of this world. Come travel in our world. Bye.